Good morning, good Friday morning to all of you. It's a small group today, but thanks for coming. All right, uh, what we're going to do today is actually, as a workshop title says, is that interactive YouTube videos for scenario based learning. Okay, let me introduce myself. I'm Carolyn, I'm the instructional designer for CEL. And uh, hi, Jenny. Um, so, uh, my co facilitator is Nico Chen. Hi, hi. Uh, I'm the video content developer from and she's also the YouTube expert, the Uber YouTube expert. So anything about <laughs> YouTube, you know, go to her. Okay. All right. Um, well, okay. Uh, I think for some of you who have been here earlier, so you know that the only link that you need to remember is the atcl.info g apps for teach edu. It brings you to this site and it will be forever parked here. So at any time, you need to uh, refer to the notes or you know, add on to it. Just feel free to use this as a reference point. Okay? This is for all our Google Apps. So uh, for today's session, it's interactive YouTube videos. And I think some of you are in for the flipping the classroom in the afternoon. Yeah, so the, the, it will be the same site. Okay? And uh, today's presentation will be, if you click on to interactive YouTube videos for scenario-based learning, The presentation site is here. You can always open it on another window, you know, right click and open a new tab. And it'll bring you to the uh, presentation. Okay, um, largely what we're going to do today is in three parts, or actually two major parts. In the first part, we're going to have a discussion, a sharing session, I think mean, among six of you, about, you know, what is interactive videos, what your idea of interactive video is, and then also what is scenario-based learning. Okay, and then um, the second portion after a short break will be a hands-on session. That's why you need to bring your laptops. Um, uh, how to use YouTube videos, the certain tools that uh, is in YouTube that you can create your own kind of a scenario-based video. Okay, so that, that will be what we're going to have for you this morning. So um, just a show of hands, how many of you have seen or created any interactive sort of videos. So what's, what's the difference between just a video and an interactive video? You going to watch one to get going? <laughs> Let's have a fun one. Sesame Street. We'll start off with Sesame Street, okay? Good morning, Sesame Street. Okay, just from this short example, how many interactive do you think points are there? The first one you choose what object that you want to use, right? Whether it's a cookie or a lime and lemon. And then after that, you test the hypothesis whether it's sink or float. So it's, it's interactive in a way that you, re you can interact with the video and, and your learners can engage with the videos. So that, that gives you an idea. So uh, for the person who is developing this interactive video, they need to have different different videos depending on the options. That's right. And so so it's that not it just one video. Yes, that's right. So you, you know that from here, you already uh, see that you, you have to create a main video with the options. Then each, each option, you should have to create another video for, for the results of the option because you have sync and float, so you need to create another video for the syncing uh, hypothesis and then the one with the float. So in all that that will come later in the in the later second part where Nico will tell you how do you plan for a video like this. Okay? So that's fun, right? Because your learners can interact with the video. It's not like I just tell the learners like, okay, you know, there's a line sync or float, then it sinks, then why? Or it floats. You know, it doesn't float. Okay? Any? Actually, when do you use this kind of videos? Because it seems to me that uh, you do not need a teacher then. You just create the video and then get the students to interact with it mm -hmm. and then uh, see for themselves whether their own hypothesis is correct or not, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the, the, it can be done. Right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. It can be done as a. a it can without be done the like without the tutor. So they, they, in this case, it's like you want to learn about what is hypothesis testing. Yeah. 
and, and you want to kind of uh, almost like drill and, and, and practice to the students that they know the concept. And, and the thing is that there's no penalty for getting it wrong, right? I mean, it's like, can you imagine if you have another different scenario where, I mean, it's not lime and lemon, it's not dangerous, but I say if you're working in the lab, where you're dealing with you know, chemicals, and then you want them to drill and practice certain procedures. So if, if there's a danger to it in a real situation, you cannot replicate it, right? So this is another example in which you can use such a video. Okay, any other questions? Any other ideas of, 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 I know you have two researchers from where you are here, so it's like, <laughs> for learning or, or what do you think you can use it for? How can it be used quite a lot? For example, the students with the special needs mm -hmm. or autistic children. Mm -hmm. I think that this creates many scenarios for them to respond to. And also it's interactive, so it's rewarding, reinforcing mm -hmm. the engagement and attention span can focus more. Okay. Any other? Is there some way uh, where what a student clicks on is feedback or telling itself? Because if, if let's say many students choose line, but one or two only choose mm -hmm. this, we need to find out why okay. many students chose the wrong answer. Okay. So All right. Just the educator idea of what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think when you build this is building a, a kind of interactive video. There are different ways of building it or, or you know producing it. I I think if you use an outside uh, kind of a tool or a software where you pay, and then uh, like a flash base or something like that, probably they will have a. Uh, capability for you to track the responses but the one that we are using is because we're using YouTube the, the tool in YouTube that, to do this kind of interactive video and it's free so we, we, we can't uh, track the kind of uh, responses for YouTube yeah yeah but if you use it for like say if you get an outside vendor kind of a special software that they can create yeah yeah let's say we use a video clip from YouTube, right? Um, and we add our own bubbles or whatever annotations uh -huh. on that already posted one. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any copyright issue? Uh, copyright in terms of if the, the YouTube video is, um, is in the Creative Commons that you can, they allow you to use it and you can add on to it. But so that's published on YouTube is already Creative Commons, right? right? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So, so you, you got to check. To you got to check their, you know, the, the Creative Commons rights that the creator has put oh. out there. Do you mean yeah. using the existing YouTube videos posted by other users and you add your own annotation? You cannot. You cannot, really, right? You can only add annotation to your own videos, the videos that you uploaded. You cannot add annotations to other people's videos. Um, even if we. You save it, save the uh, clip. No, no. Yeah. Then it here, here, Copyright already. Copyright issues. issues. That's why I want to check. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, actually, the other thing is the scenario based learning. Examples of scenario based learning. I mean, we, we know now what is an interactive video, right? And, and, and what is a scenario based learning, in a sense? I mean, one strategy that, that uh, educators use is scenario-based learning. Uh, you may use it in special ed or in psychology. So problem solving in that kind of Problem solving, yeah. You, you give a, a, a story, a context, and then they solve a problem. Okay, what we're going to do is that the next one, we have two videos if you look at this. And I think this is uh, from... Uh, Justina actually uh, from uh, PS she did this uh, moral development scenario okay and um, the other one is from VPA okay so right now on your own computers you choose one to view
Okay, the, the first one is actually we, we did it together with uh, Justina from the psychological, uh, psycho PS. Um, and I think it was a true story, it was a newspaper story in which uh, the teacher went out for an excursion. Yeah, so the, you got to make a decision. Any uh, views about this uh, scenario? <laughs> so the, the, all the three options, you still don't Oh, you went through all the three options. <laughs> Any other views about it? And, and, and maybe you want to think about how you could, you know, if you, if you want to do something like that for your own students, then, you know, how would you do it? Or, you know, for yourself, it's like, you know, how would you do it for your students in schools? Um, I'm thinking more of, of, because I'm doing chemistry, so I was thinking more of making uh, the hyperlink to different videos and see why the conditions are important. So if they choose a certain condition for a particular experiment, we can show why it failed. So therefore, they understand more towards why some conditions are necessary. So that's one application. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, you come back to my <coughs> copyright issue. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, let's say if we don't publish it, make it available to the public, right? Uh, it was just a private site, private viewing. But it would be considered as infringement, would it? Yeah, once detect. Upload, yeah. Detect. Even music also, they will detect once. I don't know how they do it, but they do it that way. They will detect it. Yeah. But then if you're doing private, I don't see why it's an infringement, right? Once you upload it, it, it will... Okay, in order to do this uh, annotation and all that, you need to upload it first, is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. It's not like you're using the tool to do your own. No, you have to upload the various video scenarios first, and then after that, you just kind of like link it together. Okay. Yeah. It's yes. a bit of a shame because uh, there are a lot of good, good videos out, out there. there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Rather than you know start from scratch and do your own, and it will be yeah. there will be limitations as to what we can do. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Do you want to annotate them because you want to show a list of videos, or? What is the reason? Okay, let, let's say you movies, right? Mm -hmm. Movies make fantastic scenarios. First, the fact that um, people who are acting in the movies, they are better actors than the people we employ for our own, you know, video making. Uh. So, what I'm thinking is, if you can actually uh, make a collage of the movie clips, oh, okay. and make it as your alternatives. Like, for instance, Justina has different alternatives, right? But hers is more or less like a static, uh, mm -hmm. Static picture, right? Except for a few. Mm -hmm. What you can do is create your own uh, one video of your own, and then add annotation in the video, and the link is to link to to the movies. The movies. Okay, then so you won't infringe. Right? Yeah, yes. you won't infringe any copyright. Okay. Not all the videos. Yeah. Because I think it's just uploaded. That means. Yeah. So you do your first video, and then you you. Add annotation and say, okay, go to this link, which will link you to a YouTube movie. Oh, I see, okay. And then for them to. Mm -hmm. link. Yeah. But as long as you provide a link, not like as if you, you embed the annotation on the movie itself or other people's work. Oh, I see, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, like you create your own media, yeah. a menu, something like yes. a menu page, a video menu page. You link it. Provide your video template kind of. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I I think in psychology studies you have a lot. I mean, for I know what Justina did was that she brings the discussion back into the tutorial groups. Um, yeah. After she showed the video, I mean, after they went through the interactive, and then she lead the discussion from there. And, and one of the things that she said that she wanted to produce this is because she said that um, there's no one right answer that you say all, you know, the, the teacher get punished, right? Or gets quoted, right? There's no one, I mean, there's a realistic, real life situation, right? There's no one answer to everything or there's no one right answer to everything. And, and, and you know, you can give them various, various uh, choices for that. Yeah. I mean, I've used a lot of videos in my own teaching, but mm -hmm. the problem now is that at each step, you click and then you show a different video. Mm. So I was just thinking that this might yeah. be a neater way of yes. doing it. So right? after this, we can yeah. teach you how to do the link up all the videos and okay. annotate it. Yeah. yeah. How about geography? Mi Huang, any? Mm. 
ideas that you could? Yeah, I, I think I, I think it's possible to use this kind of interactive videos for geography. For instance, for the topic on aging population. Mm -hmm. So how do we actually tackle some issues? Mm -hmm. Should we have a nursing home in a housing estate? Mm -hmm. So can give various That's options right. Right. and then for discussion. Yes, yeah. open up the discussion. Yes. That's great. Yes. Right. Yep. Okay. So uh, so some of the benefits we have covered just now, right? I mean, we say that the, the, the students are more active, they are engaging. And I think um, uh, one, of the, one of you mentioned that it, it, you can fail, right? I mean, there's no penalty for failure. So it's like what you call a failure forward kind of thing. It's like, you know, yeah? I mean, it, there's no harm picking the wrong choice. There's no, you know, you, you pick the lemon that floats or, or sing. There's no harm, you just, you know, do it again. Yeah, any other things that you think that will benefit your students? I think because of the, the medium, which is the video, mm -hmm. and our students nowadays are so into it, so I suppose this would really engage them mm -hmm. rather than for a tutor or a teacher just to pose a scenario for discussion. That's by just watching this clip, for instance, it would mm -hmm. engage them first. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. So it's a kind of like, you know, start off your lesson with a video. Yes. Video is a new text kind of thing, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course the student is the problem solving, right? And, and especially for when you want them to think and, and not just, you know, give you the one answer kind of thing, so, you know, discuss. Yeah, so there are a lot of benefits that you can. There are limitations too. Yeah, so uh, one of the limitations is actually the tool itself, um, the YouTube. Uh, the interactivity doesn't work on a mobile device. Uh, mobile devices, uh, you can't click on it. Okay, that is if you use a YouTube annotation tool. Uh, that's why just now I had to tell you all to bring your uh, laptop. Yeah, you can create the annotation tool, but then you can't click on it on a mobile device. It means on your head, uh, on your cell phone, on your iPads. Okay, all right, on your tablets. But that's only for YouTube. Okay, if you use other means of uh, designing it, flash base and all that. Okay, would 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 this kind of a video clip be more suitable as a tuning in, because? Discussion can be very rich, mm -hmm. and it really hinges on the person who's facilitating the discussion, mm -hmm. depending on the kind of questions that the person asks. Mm -hmm. So there is a limit to how much we can pack into the video, because mm -hmm. in real life interaction, mm -hmm. the discussion is very rich. Yes. But I don't think the yes. technology itself yes. can can have that. Yeah. So to me, I I see that. This may be good for tuning in, mm -hmm. but what follows mm -hmm. after the discussion that follows after once mm -hmm. the scenario That's is right. being presented, it's still a, yeah, it's, it's still, still a that. face to face. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, what some people have done is that actually at the bottom of uh, uh, the YouTube video or back in uh, for Justina, I think she she parked it in Blackboard. Okay. So uh, you go back to Blackboard and then you comment on it in oh. in, in a thread and discussion thread. If you if you need to monitor your students and, and assess your students for their you know participation, so they will you know write their views why they chose this and you know. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean that's that's one way of uh, using it. Yeah. Or I think YouTube at the bottom you have comments that you can put, they can add on. With regards to the limitations that you mentioned, so even if they have a touch screen, they can't. Yeah, you cannot click on the choices. But we have a workaround. Uh, later, he will show you. Yeah, a bit less, you know, uh, fun. But then you can still go make a choice of one, two, three. Yeah, in in the video itself. Because I'm thinking some in classrooms and all that. Uh, some students they use the tablet. Yeah, yeah tablet as well. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe. You can still link up, but it's just that not on the box itself on the video where you click. You know, like click yeah. here. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, so any other questions about uh, 
what we're going to do hands on today. Okay. Usually, how long does it take to develop a video like this? That's that short little clip by Justina. How long did she take to develop that? Two months. Yeah, because important thing is not the production itself. Okay. Actually, it's the, the, the thoughts that go yes, before yes. the production. What kind of scenario you want to build? And as you mentioned, you cannot be all embracing it. That's why you say you have only like a few choices, yeah. right? And then how do you link it up, you know, in terms of your branching of a three? I mean, I, I mean there are examples, uh, which I will give it to you later. It's like very complicated, very complicated branching, but then that will take a long time to do. Yeah, but for this one we did at least two months because of uh, story. What story you want to tell? Then you know how you're going to branch it. What are the alternatives? The choice, then the consequence, and then of course uh, we did a very simple two D kind of animation. As you can see, only the wings fly, you know that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, and it's a kind of very flat, you know, straight two D animation. Because instead if of we a were video. to do it on our own, the time is actually involved. Mm -hmm. So. So what you're saying is that NIE will give us the support if we, we have a storyboard in mind yeah. and then we discuss yeah. with the instructional designer. Designer, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is that perhaps you may want to consider that in this case, like, like Justina, like, okay, the teacher produces the video, right? Since it's, a, it's an annotation tool, it's interactive, have you ever thought since the students are so into videos and all that, they could produce their own? So you may even just produce the first one and then let them think and link to your main video to different scenarios. I mean, that's an idea that you can, can do, right? Yeah. In fact, the, the second video that, the example, after Justina, the VPA student, actually that was done by the students as part of their project Yeah, for VPA. Yeah. So there's another idea. Like you, don't, you may not have to produce everything yourself, you may ask the students to go into groups and they produce their own. Yeah, better than this, right? <laughs> yeah so then you learn, you learn from each other, right? Yeah, so you just give them the, the basic story and then, you know, they can produce the rest themselves. And then, then after that, it's still open for them, right? I mean, it's like, you know, yeah. It's like Gen X and Gen Y collaboration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 